Oh, personal rig update. We currently have a semi-broken PC and loads of people are like, why did you build it like this? Look at it, you've got a massive gap there, you've got gaps all over the place, what are you doing? But again, please remember, this is not the final form. We've got some water cooling to do. So this cooler really was just a little bit of a temporary thing. If you don't think about things properly before you actually buy all the parts, you can end up with something like this, which is almost great, but then you just have a few weird things that you wish you'd thought about sooner. But anyway, today's video is not about defending myself and all of my glory. Today's video is actually about seeing if we can fix this computer. And you might be thinking that this is actually working properly. I mean, we've got Windows up here, right? And no, you will notice that unfortunately, the only drive that we have detected is actually the SATA SSD. None of the PCI drives in this system are actually showing up at all. And don't forget, we've got three in here. So I want to show you exactly what I would do, and in fact, what I need to do to actually fix this system. Acer's Predator Triton 300SE is your one-stop shop for all of your gaming and productivity needs. The all-metal design looks slick at just 17.9 millimeters thick, cramming masses of power into its portable frame. Equipped with an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 laptop graphics card, an Intel i7 processor, and a 144Hz IPS screen, the Predator Triton 300SE is perfect for powerhouse gaming on the go. Learn more today with that link down below. The first port of call should always be to update your motherboard BIOS in this sort of situation, because clearly this was like a, not necessarily a pre-release one, but it was a very early BIOS and things may not be as good as they should be. Welcome to the new Microsoft Edge. Would you like to install? No, I wouldn't. Just chill for a second, please, Windows. We will do a Google or probably a Bing search for the 690 Master motherboard. We we'll click on support, head over to BIOS, and then the latest one was released a few days ago. It does tell you in the description what sort of things it should fix. I am looking for something that says PCIe, but I don't think any of these actually say that which is a little bit worrying. If this doesn't work, what we will have to do is take all of the PCIe drives out one by one and essentially see if any of them work individually. And I also do want to try disconnecting that SATA drive because sometimes what will happen, and probably quite likely with this board to be honest with you, is that if you do plug in some SATA devices, some of the PCI lanes will then stop going to some other bit of your PC, which might mean that these SSDs are essentially cut off because it thinks there is a SATA device there, which obviously there is. But because I'm using port one, I don't think that's the case, but we can try. Trial and error. That is the secret. Q flash update BIOS. There it is. Z690 Aorus Master. Yes, please. Update the BIOS. If there's a power cut now, it is quite literally curtains on this build. I didn't say that very dramatically. Can I do that again? If the power goes off now, it's going to be curtains. That's better. Come on, verifying file. Give me some of that sweet, sweet BIOS action. While we're waiting, do I know any jokes? Yes. I may have said this before on the channel, but I'm going to do it again. So I went into WH Smith the other day, which in the UK, it's like this stationery store, and I bought a one kilo tub of Tipex. Big mistake. I suppose while we're waiting, I probably should actually walk you through this PC and what I do and don't like. Firstly, the Be Quiet fans, I think, are great. This is actually a really quiet system straight out of the box, even with one of the Corsair stock fans, which is great. And it does mean that when we get some radiators on here, I do think we're going to see some very good results. Now, this case is definitely a little bit on the larger side, but you do have to be careful with where you put things. Because if you look on the back, you can see that you can't actually put many cables around this sort of area. And what I want to do is to have a liquid cooling system where we have fans and radiators on the front and at the top. And then I want some sort of distro plate or some sort of pump res here, but I want it to look super clean. And I think there's only gonna be a couple of products that will actually do that. When we're looking at Corsair's 360 one, the problem is the pump sort of sticks out and a lot of them do have the pump at the bottom, which sticks out, you can have cables and it sort of ruins the aesthetic. What I really want to do is have something where you have the distro plate here and then you can still have everything else going on and it just looks super clean, there's no cables whatsoever. Okay, here we go. Aorus, I'm getting a phone call. Hello? That was a good phone call. Can we get a display please? Automatic repair is gonna blue screen, isn't it? Okay, so this is the same sort of problem we had before. It's trying to load into an SSD from the bootloader but then Windows can't actually access the drives. Ugh, it's not something I've seen before, if I'm honest. But let's see what happens if we turn it off and we actually disconnect the SATA drive. 
So now we have just NVMe SSD storage. Don't forget that one of these drives might be broken and this is what's causing all of the issues and the hassle, which would be very upsetting. But for it to actually cause three separate NVMe drives not to work, I think that's very peculiar. I think it's the same problem, to be honest with you. Aha, we have actually made some progress though, because this might just be like a BIOS thing, but before it didn't actually show any M.2 drives in this section at all. So we have at least got all three of the drives showing up, the MP600 and then the two Fire Cuders, one of which I butchered and may or may not be causing the problem. So let's try booting onto the Fire Cuder drive, just to see if that makes any difference. I'll be honest, I don't think it will. No. <laughs> I don't understand. I really don't understand. The required device isn't connected or fundamentally can't be accessed. Something about this motherboard or some sort of setting, which I've never seen before, is actually stopping us from using any of the NVMe drives at all. So let's take them out one by one and see if that helps. Don't you just love troubleshooting? I know I do, it's great. And I know what some of you are thinking, this is why I haven't built a gaming PC yet, it's far too complicated. I still think it's because I'm overcomplicating things or because I personally have damaged something. And both of these are things you just wouldn't have done, so I wouldn't worry about it too much to be honest with you. It is definitely a possibility, but I think the chances are quite small. And you can usually fix the problem anyway, as we will hopefully do in this video. I mean, maybe it's because they're all PCI Gen 4 drives? Maybe that's why it's getting confused? So if you use this slot, this is what disables the SATA ports. That's what it's telling me in here. So those are the drives removed. And then let's see if this very simple configuration, oh, I haven't plugged the cable in, whoops. Well, at least this shows you what happens if you don't plug the power into the graphics card. I think it will get upset. I did that deliberately just to show you, 100%. Right, for real, let's do it. Boot sequence, and let's try again with the MP600 Pro. In my opinion, there is no reason now why this shouldn't work. There is no faulty drive in it, there's no misconfiguration. It is a very simple one. Drive in computer, will it boot? If it doesn't, well, we've got a very big problem. Oh, are you taking, are you taking the piss? I mean, that's progress though, that is progress. It didn't do that before, that could just be because the install's now gone a bit weird. So we will install Windows and see what happens. The big question now is whether Windows will actually find the drive. Because remember, before, when we had our SATA drive, it was the only one that was actually being detected. None of the NVMe drives would actually come up at all. So let's go Windows 11 Pro, and fingers crossed, it gives us some devices. That's very good news. And watch how quickly this copies the files that are done. <laughs> I'm not sure I believe it. I know it says copying files, but I mean, can it really copy 20 gig that quickly? Does it need to? I don't know, but that is rapid. Rapid. I've taken this opportunity to actually take a little photo to show you the damage that is on this SSD, and you can really see what we're talking about. I don't know whether this is catastrophic damage, whether it's gonna slow the drive down, whether there's redundancy, whether it's a completely bad idea to use a damaged drive because then, well, you're relying on data and it might go corrupt. It's definitely not a very good idea, but I definitely could try using it as my gaming drive because ultimately if, you know, Call of Duty Warzone or Age of Empires has a few artifacts and a few problems and I need to, like, just reinstall it on a different drive, that's fine. If it's your final year project for university, Probably a different story. But I don't know, let me know in the comments. Do you think this will work? Or am I stupid? Or more stupid than usual? Breaking 400 pound drive. I haven't actually told Seagate yet, by the way. They're not gonna be happy. They probably wanted that back. Well, I can have it back. Ah uh, yes, I'm also installing Windows 11 for my personal system, which I know might be controversial, but if you are going for a 690 board, then please do use Windows 11, because there's a lot better communication with these new chips as the thread director baked into the OS on like a different layer, rather than relying on software that you have to install into Windows. Oh, I'm gonna have to blur this out. I don't wanna show you my Wi-Fi names. They're, they're rude. Rude boy over here. Sticking it to the man with the Wi-Fi names. Oh, I'm such a nerd, aren't I? Let's name your device. Put him in a body bag PC. Oh, it doesn't fit. Let's just go with body bag PC. Yes, that is a Karate Kid reference, by the way. Put him in a body bag, yeah! <laughs> it's because the new series of Cobra Kai has just come out and I'm into it again. That would be a great sponsored segment, wouldn't it? 
but they didn't sponsor this video. I'm not hard enough for them. Okay, we are in. We are cooking on gas, ladies and gentlemen. 12900K, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory, and then at the moment, just the one SSD. Okay then, step one is complete. We have a working system, but now we need to actually see if we can get it to work with everything. And I think the best way of doing this is just to start at the beginning, really. Have we broken this SSD? Because now we know that this top slot definitely works. It doesn't make sense to add these drives in until we know that this one does or does not. So we're going to remove the Corsair drive from the top slot, and then we will put the two terabyte slightly broken culprit in. Obviously you would want to put the heatsink on if you're actually going to use this drive for a long period of time, but as we're literally just going to be seeing whether it loads, it's probably going to be all right. Ultimately it would just throttle if there was a problem. Yeah, we might have spotted our issue. I think I've broken the drive. That is upsetting. On the plus side though, at least it does show you the amount of damage that can be done, not only from like fiddling about with screwdrivers on very small expensive things, but also if you do have a fault with your system and you've got loads of different NVMe drives in here, then take them out and put them back in one by one because this has happened to other people. Gareth, my sometimes cameraman, had exactly the same issues, had a dodgy SSD, takes it out, it works, puts it back in, it doesn't. Add that to your list of troubleshooting tips. Select the operating system you'd like to install. Select the drive. Hang on a minute. The plot thickens! You can't write this script, it's too exciting. I don't believe it. I love an exciting video. You thought it was dead. I thought it was dead. We were dead wrong. Let's put two drives in. Can I be cheeky and get this underneath the graphics card? Oh, I reckon I can, you know. I reckon I can. If we do get a blue screen, that is pretty bad, to be honest. Okay, yep, that's good. Open up, Explorer, only the one. That's sad, because if I take this out, look, one. What if we go into Device Manager? Oh no, no, it's there, there it is. Seagate Fire Cue to Drive, okay. Disk partitions, is that gonna work? Looks like it. Delete the volume, yes please. Let's call this Dodgy Dave. Which now means we can add our final drive. I guess my issue is if we do develop a problem and that drive has to be removed, after I've done all this hardline custom calling, it's going to be a right pig to get out. We can put the heatsink back on as well now. It will help if we actually plug the display port in, won't it? Well, that is definitely progress. We are in Windows with three NVMe drives installed. Dodgy Dave is still there, which is excellent. That's what we want to hear. We will initialize the disk we haven't used yet. That is, that's good, that's very good news. Which leaves us with one final thing to plug in and connect, which is that SATA device. Is this going to ruin everything? Is my life going to get sadder? The only problem is, because they're all two terabyte drives, it's hard to identify which is which. I do not want to delete the PCIe drive. But they definitely are all here though. We've got drive zero, drive one, two, and three for a total of four. And then I guess the last thing to do is to actually test these drives, see what the speed is, and hopefully be very happy with the end result. Disk number one. Realistically, give or take a little bit, it says up to 6,500 writes and up to 7,000 reads. Bang, 7,000, yes sir. Oh, and there we go, 6,772. So Corsair's bang on the money, and that drive works. Let's move on to our definitely working SanDisk drive, disk E. That is something I've never seen before. Faster writes than reads. Would you like to see the results? I know I'm looking forward to them. That makes it sound so lame, but I am. I love numbers. I don't actually, I never really got on with them to be honest. But anyway, here we go. Pretty much exactly the same, which you would expect should there be no damage. Pretty much bang on the money for both, if anything, the damage drive is slightly faster. There we go, we have managed to save the day so far. Is this gonna cause me a lot of problems down the line? Only time will tell. In the next video, we'll be walking you through everything that I will actually be doing to this to make it my own, all of the software that I install, all of the benchmarking. We'll actually be looking at some of the numbers here and see what sort of performance we can get out of this, obviously, before we do the water cooling. But in the meantime, if there is anything in this PC that you wanna learn a little bit more about, including current pricing, you can find that link down below. And of course, while you're down there, don't forget to check out the Acer Predator Triton 300SE. Packing an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 
RTX 3060 laptop GPU. This machine supports DLSS technology for sky high frame rates in games like Dying Light 2, Nvidia Reflex for super fast reaction times in titles such as Apex and Battlefield 2042, and real time ray tracing in titles like Cyberpunk 2077, all thanks to the second generation of Nvidia ray tracing cores. Get yours today with that link down below. Thank you so much for watching this video, supporting the channel as always. If there's any questions, then do let me know down in the comment section below. But smash the like button, get yourself subscribed, and I'll see you in the next one.